Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers. Megan here with Heartwood Art. You know, making benches mobile is a necessity in a small shop. And today I'm going to share with you how I mounted the casters to these work benches in a lot more secure way than just drilling up straight into the end grain. If this is your first time here, be sure to poke all over this channel and see more shop tips for things like building this miter saw station and this workbench. And come on over to heartwoodart.com for more tips and tutorials. All right, let's dive in. Let's start by talking about why you don't want to just screw directly into the end grain with your caster bolt. When you insert a screw into the end grain of the leg, the thread of the screw is running directly parallel to the grain of the wood. That means it's a lot easier to knock out of the wood. And since these screws are holding casters, they're going to take a lot more side-to-side -side stress. That's especially true if you hit a bump when doing things like rolling the bench outside your garage shop. There may be a lip or a dip between the garage floor and the drive, and the wheel and the screws holding it take that full impact. Now, once an ingrain screw becomes loose, it just starts eating out a bigger hole until it falls out of the wood because it has nothing to hold on to. And that's why you want to insert the screw across the grain. Pocket holes on opposite sides of the leg are a super easy and sturdy way to attach a plywood square to the bottom of your bench leg. And you'll screw the caster bolts to that square. The screws are cutting across the grain of the leg and the screws are pointing inward at an angle. This eliminates the side-to-side -side shearing even if you hit a bump now and then. So instead of mounting the caster directly to the end of a 4x4 post, mount a piece of plywood to that post and then mount the caster to the plywood square. Okay, let's talk about cutting those plywood squares. A 4x4 post is actually 3.5 by 3.5 inches. That means you'll need a strip of plywood that's 3.5 inches wide by at least 14 inches long. Now I would actually cut one at least 24 inches long, and here's why. I had a scrap piece of plywood that was 17 inches long that I ripped down to 3.5 inches wide. Then I put it on my miter saw and started cutting off 3.5 inches at a time. And when I got to the last one, I had this problem. The board was so short that there was no safe place for me to hold it down with the material clamp, and certainly not with my hand. Even if I could have held it, there is too much danger of kick out from the saw, and boy, do those little pieces of wood go flying. So I used longer boards and clamps to hold the shorter plywood strip in place while I cut, and yes, I stood off to the side a bit just in case. Now, if you start with the longer strip in the first place, you won't have this problem. And you don't want the screws for the caster to hit the pocket hole screws for the legs either. So you need to plan for where all these screws are going to hit. You can only get just so close to the edge of the leg with pocket holes. So you may need to do a bit of planning before you even drill the pocket holes. So go see my post on the Craig Jig K3 and K4 how-to cheat sheet and tips for details on how to align a K3 jig. So it's in the outermost position you can place a pocket hole. And I'll give you a hint. It's 9 sixteenths of an inch. And lining up the gray edge of the K3 with the edge of the leg puts the hole exactly 9 sixteenths from that edge. Easy, right? Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about the caster placement. Here I've got an edge-on shot of the bottom of my 4x4 bench leg after it's been cut to size and notched for the rails. Now the left side of the Craig K3 is where I'm drilling the hole to attach the plywood square. And I'll move the K3 over and do the same on the right. And then flip over the leg and drill two more pocket holes in those same places. Now here you can see the orientation of the 2-inch caster I'll be using on my bench. The caster mounting holes are clearly to the inside of where the pocket holes will hit. So it's safe to mount it this way and the two screws will never touch. You'll also notice that the caster mount is rectangular. So if I turn the mount 90 degrees either way, it would likely still be safe to mount that way. So if you're using bigger wheels, then you'll need to pay very close attention to the orientation of that mounting bracket rectangle. 
Now let's talk about drilling the pocket holes. I'm using the edge of my miter saw station material support shelf to clamp down the bench leg. And you can see my post on Easy DIY Miter Saw Station Building Plans for details on how and why I built the support shelf to double as a pocket hole making station. And you can also see my Easy DIY Notched 4x4 Workbench Legs for how I cut the notches on my miter saw. It was so much easier than using a circular saw and chisel. Okay, now it's a time to attach our plywood square. You know, I could have attached the plywood squares right after I drilled the pocket holes, but I chose to wait until I was building the bench frame. I used my handy Craig right angle clamp on the top and the floor on the bottom to hold the plywood square to the leg. That sure made it a lot easier to attach evenly. Now, having the frame built also meant that it would stand up on its own for attaching the caster. And during the frame build, I had to flip it upside down anyway, so this was really a time saver too. Be sure to check your caster mounting bracket orientation. If you didn't draw it in before, you want the screw holes to be on the inside of the pocket holes. And at this point, I just drew the outline of the caster mounting bracket and holes. And then I drilled those pilot holes. Now, the lag screws that fit these casters is one quarter inch by one inch. The drill bit I used for the pilot hole was 12 64ths of an inch. And you could use a 7 32nd inch. And here you can see my quick and dirty method for marking my bit with tape so that I don't drill too deep. And you can also see my post on pilot holes and why using the right drill bit and countersink is so critically important and how I determine what size bit to use. Okay, let's mount the caster. Now this is how my dad taught me to bolt something down. Put the screws in diagonally, and then ensure all are well started before tightening any of them down fully. And then tighten them up, meaning thumb tight diagonally. And then tighten all of them down, meaning wrench tight diagonally. Okay, now you have a rolling workbench. And you can use the same method for double 2x4 legs like I did on my miter saw station too. I sure hope these tips on mounting casters have been helpful to you. Be sure to come on over to heartwoodart.com and see more helpful tips.